Good afternoon and welcome back to the latest edition of the Invest Talk Market Analysis for the week ending July 5th, 2024. I hope everyone had a wonderful July 4th uh, holiday. And this week I'm going to title the video with the Psalm rule triggered is a recession ahead. And this is pretty important. Um, and I'll dig into what that means. This is a heat map. I'll dig into that um in a minute but uh you know we'll, we'll go over the economic data first and then dig into the charts uh first i want to remind you to like and subscribe to this channel as well as our podcast and best talk i'm host justin klein and let's dig into the data here now talk about the psalm rule now what is the psalm rule now this was invented by i believe it was a it was a psalm or it was a it was a professor uh shall we say and basically when this goes uh Let's go back to the explanation. When the three-month moving average of the jobless rate, so unemployment rate, rises by at least a half a percentage point from its lows during the previous 12 months. Okay? So let's look at that. What's the previous low of the, uh, of the last 12 months? Well, that's July of last year, 3.5%. And what is the three-month moving average here? So April, May, June. So we have 3.9, 4, and 4.1. You average that out, do the simple math. That's four. So we've triggered the SOM rule. Now, what you can see here, though, is, you know, if you go forward a, a couple months, you know, and if an employment flattens out, the SOM rule could be no longer in effect pretty easily, right? Because you have uh, 3.8 was the, well, I guess it would be 3.7 over the past um, 12 months if you throw out this July number. So that'll be the new low, okay? Next, uh, basically in two months, okay? Yeah, because we still have July. July is obviously uh, 12 months. And then, um, so it's a trigger, but it uh, doesn't necessarily mean we're going into a recession in and of itself. But let's dig into the data and see if we can get a get some corroborating evidence. How about that? Construction spending month over month, negative territory for the first time since October of 2022. In over two, over a year and a half, nearly two years, First time this has gone negative month over month. Okay, so that would be a check mark saying, yeah, this is a, this is a recessionary figure. Okay, initial employment claims this ticked up to 3.84. This is a three month chart. Let's go to um, a one year chart. Sorry, no, why did I say 3.84? 238,000 jobs, nearly the highest level in a year. Um, but certainly edging up there. Now, if you look at the continuous claims for unemployment, which I talk about a lot, how much more important that is, that looks to be breaking out. It did peak out in April of last year, about 1.861 million. Now we're at 1.858. So we're very close to this breaking out to a multi-year high. Another check mark to corroborate uh, the SOM rule. The ISM PMIs that dipped into negative territory for the first time since January, uh, sorry, December of 2022, and the lowest level in over three years since the COVID crisis. Check mark there. You have the prices paid index. Now that has decelerated. You're still growing, um, so you're not getting major deflationary impulses, but certainly uh, you could say a stagflationary type of environment. Um, but uh, that, that's probably not confirming a, a major recession. Uh, the fact that prices haven't ebbed you know, dramatically. They still just kind of are in this, uh, in this downtrend, but not to the lowest levels in multi-years or anything like that. New orders, that went to 47.3 in the shrinkage. Remember, anything above 50 on the, serv on the ISM number is uh, shrinking uh, year over year. And remember, this is the services. So this is the vast majority of the economy. Everyone focuses on manufacturing, but our economy is mainly service-based. So three quarters, roughly, of the economy is based on services. And if that part of the economy is headed into negative territory, that pretends to a recession. So ISM services new order index, that turned down to 47.3 on the new orders, the lowest level since January, or sorry, December of 2022, Okay. Uh, what do we get here? The employment index. That's been in negative, ter negative territory for a while, but you have multiple months here uh, below 50 and got a little bit worse in the month of June. And then lastly, non-farm payrolls on Friday. That came in at 206,000. 
And there were some downgrades to the previous uh, two months as well. Something that's, you know, I believe it was 80,000 in total um, revisions. So this was definitely a weak jobs report overall. And that created that unemployment rate going up to 4.1%. So there is a lot of evidence beyond the SOM rule that the economy is headed for another bout of weakness. Um, and that means the Fed is likely to cut. Now, the, the Fed doesn't like to surprise the markets. They like to signal a rate cut. And that's likely what you are going to get at the end of July, which is, hey, if things carry on the way they are with the uh, weak economic data, with um, an, uh, inflation continuing to ebb, uh, a rate cut is on the table for September. And I think that's when they will cut. You have now a 52 plus that 5.9 over there on the left, the uh, odds of two rate cuts. Um, you're up to about 80% chance that there will be one rate cut in the month of September. That'll be the first rate cut. When you're up around 80, that's kind of the market pricing in. And you're getting a lot of evidence that makes it seem so, that they, they would be, they're ready to uh, cut rates or, or at least very close to. Um, and I think you get another one in December as well. November will be right around the election. They probably don't want to mess with that one. Um, but you are going to get, um, you know, probably that two rate cuts by the end of the year. Maybe three, right? Decent chance of three, right? Higher chance of a three rate cuts than just one. Okay, that's the market's pricing in. And finally, I think the market is caught up with reality, seems to me. Okay, so just a heads up there. Now, let's dig into this. I thought this was uh, really interesting. From TradingView, uh, ETF heat map uh, for the week. S&P was up a little bit. These are all S&P ETFs on the left side. You can see why IVV is the lowest cost and probably the best S&P proxy. Um, VTI, broader markets, up to uh, about 1%. NASDAQ was up, obviously up the most, about 3%. Um, but some interesting other movements here. You have IFA, foreign stocks up 2.38. Nice move there. IVW, this is the uh, the growth side of the market that certainly uh, did better. You had weakness in small caps. You had weakness um, in dividend stocks. Uh, you had weakness in healthcare. Um, you know, so really small caps. Small caps didn't do too well. Um, so that's kind of a high level uh, what the market did this week. Kind of a bounce back uh, from that sell off in tech. Um, and this is at least the one month. Let's go to the weekly performance. You had Nvidia up one percent. Apple definitely did the best of the Fang names up four point nine percent. Amazon only up one. So this is really driven by Meta, Microsoft, Google, and Apple. Nvidia and Amazon certainly, you know, really lagged uh, the overall uh, tech ind indices. Costco up four percent. Walmart, Walmart up three point percent. AMD up seven. Broadcom up six point seven. Where was the weakness? You had weakness in things like. Healthcare technology, AbV down 1.6% uh, there. Uh, what's this one? Merck down. Okay, let's close that out. Uh, McDonald's down 2.5%. Disney down 4%. Exxon down 2 Certainly um, energy struggled. Utilities, kind of a mixed bag there. Healthcare services, UNH, that was uh, down. And so you can kind of see where the strength lies. Definitely weakness continuing in places like Nike. Um, that was down on the week, but not a whole lot after that big drop. Um, yeah, so that's kind of where uh, the market ended up here for the week. But let's dig into the charts because one week does not tell a story. Okay, uh, I think the main story though was the ten-year. You had a spike in uh, in the ten-year earlier in the week, but then a sell-off on the jobs numbers and and more economic weakness. And so um, it's pretty clear, you know, if you go to uh, Let's go T bills. There we go. Let's go to the three month T bill um, chart. Let's see if that wants to pull up. Maybe it doesn't want to pull up for me. Well, I'll just say this <laughs> rates dropped. Um, and I'll show you that in a little bit. Uh, the yen, that one uh, looks like it's trying to peak out here, dollar yen. And this is all because, hey, maybe that rate differential between what the uh, Japanese central bank, JGBs, uh, are going to trade at is going to be is going to be tight tighter uh, compared to treasuries right um, and so if treasuries uh, rates fall um, that rate differential shrinks and you get strength in the yen and weakness in the dollar I could definitely see that uh, let's see maybe I can do the dollar index let's 
there we go, the DXY. Show that. So the dollar looks to be rolling over here as well. So let's pull out to a, a weekly chart. This is very, very important because this will lead this will this will pretend to leadership in the markets. Strong dollar tends to mean the uh, men, tends to mean that uh, you have growth over value, uh, growth outperforming value. If this rolls over, I think you'll get strength in uh, commodities, industrials, uh, basic materials, etc. Um, and we'll see if we get some follow through next week. The move index, uh, that is not breaking out to the upside. So that's also pretending to uh, future Fed easing. Uh, and the fact that that's not breaking out, that uh, the Fed is getting ahead of any major upsets in the bond market. And ultimately that, uh, that will tell you a lot about the credit crisis or if there is a credit crisis and right now there isn't uh, on the horizon. Industrials, just kind of consolidating sideways, nothing really to see here. Uh, WTI, that this is the uh, oil prices. You're making a series of higher highs and higher lows. You had the um, you had the strategic oil reserve. Uh, Biden administration is actually buying a lot of oil. The first uh, the week at, week before last, the 21st, they bought more oil than they have uh, in multiple years. So um, it looks like they've stepped in to kind of support the oil market near those lows around seventy dollars per share. Uh, and then if you look at the this is the banking index. This does not look great. Are you looking at like a head and shoulders top here? Uh, you had the problem with one bank. They had to raise capital. I forgot the name of it. It was, uh, uh, was that a New York bank? I covered it on the show earlier this week, but there was one bank that eh, they didn't really, uh, they got an investment from Fortress, call it a bailout, but just internally, you know, they needed to raise capital and they have, a, they think they had a huge exposure to commercial real estate. Um, and I still think there's a lot of potential weakness in the commercial uh, market. And then you can uh, commercial uh, regional bank market, regional bank market. Um, and that compares to what you're seeing is strength in the broker dealers. This is IAI, this is the broker dealer index. And so what you can see is the Morgan Stanley's of the world, right? So this is, uh, let's see if this one can come up. Let's go Morgan Stanley. Morgan Stanley is, maybe this doesn't want to go. Let's do this. My internet might not be working very well. Let's do this. There we go. So you can see Morgan Stanley doing well. You see Goldman Sachs doing well. Um, so when these continue to head higher, um, you know, really financial conditions will likely remain easy, uh, right? Because you're you're not getting a major sell-off in the Kyo bond index, for example. You know, you're seeing this remain relatively strong, and so you're not really getting any issues uh, there. Uh, gold prices now up to twenty four hundred dollars per ounce. This looks ready to break out, obviously, on that next bout of Fed easing. You had junior miners also really breaking out to the upside. And so that's very important to, to, to remain bullish on because I think uh, you're, you're going to see uh, gold break out again. I think we hit close to $3,000 per ounce by the end of the year. Uh, you had, uh, let's go to the S&P. Obviously, there was some strength there on the week, really on those, uh, those large cap names. Here's the NYSE though. This is uh, 3,000 of the largest names, or, or 2,500, excuse me, of the, of the largest names. So a uh, much broader uh, swath of the entire market. And that's really just been chopping sideways uh, since March. Uh, NVIDIA, while it had a, a decent week, um, you did have a sell-off on Friday. And this does look like it has potentially topped. Um, let's see. Let's, let me get to any other... I have multiple charting software here, so maybe I can pull up uh, another one. There we go. Let me look at SHYG to SHYV. Actually, SHY. There we go. This is the uh, this is short-term junk to short-term treasuries. Obviously, this is holding in there. This is really what I, I want to talk about. Is that while I think we are entering a period where liquidity is going to ebb. Uh, there is a few things. There's the Treasury funding, quarterly funding announcement. They're issuing more T-bills, more longer term notes. Here's IEF, okay, for example. And that's why I think these uh, longer dated issues have started to underperform the shorter dated issues. So if I go like this, here's SHY to IEF. You, what you're seeing is uh, the uh, short term uh, bonds are um, underperforming. Um, 
and uh, sorry, outperforming. I apologize. Uh, and what that means is I don't think the, you're going to get a huge move lower in the 10 year, um, but you're going to get a significant move lower in things like SHY, right? Which is uh, the short term uh, bonds. And that is because the treasury is issuing longer days security is going to put pressure on the long end of the curve. Um, and as long as the move index is relatively low, you know, uh, and looking like this, I don't think you have many issues. Okay. Um, and it allows the Fed after this big move in, sorry, not the Fed, the treasury after this big move in equities uh, with uh, financial conditions relatively loose um, to, you know, issue some duration, issue some longer dated bonds. And ultimately that is pulling liquidity out of the market. Okay. Um, in addition, you have probably the treasury general account thinking about uh, allowing that to increase so that if you hit a, um, uh, I believe it's the, the debt ceiling here later in the, the year, I think it's, or maybe it's January of next year. I know it's late this year, or early next year. Um, they're going to want to have that large so that if they come into an impasse, which, you know, based on how dysfunctional our government is, it likely will happen. And, you know, they'll have some firepower to keep things moving for a while while those negotiations happen. Um, so in order to do that, they're going to have to pull some of the liquidity out of the system, put it into the Treasury's checking account, and that ultimately will be a drag on the overall, um, on, on the overall liquidity situation. Um, so just a heads up there and what we're seeing uh, along with that economic data kind of weakening, you're likely to see uh, an economy or a, a market that is uh, probably going to get choppier. Right. You've already been really in a choppy uh, equity situation here uh, really since the end of March. And, you know, it's a very top heavy, uh, poor breadth um, type of market. And I think it's very important for uh, you to go into the second half of the year understanding that there's likely to be new leadership in the market. OK. There's likely to be new leadership and uh, whether that's from, you know, the more risk off names, right? Utilities, here's utilities, Let's see if this wants to come up. I'm trying out this new software and it, it's okay, you know, um, let's see, there's what I'm looking for, utilities, okay? Utility stocks, see if this wants to come up, let me go back to the tried and true. This is why you pay for the good stuff. Utility stocks have pulled back, but you know these are in an uptrend. Okay, let's look at uh, XLP, consumer staples. That's also in a nice uptrend. So you're getting that part of the market really gaining some traction, while there are some more cyclical parts of the market. XLY. Now this is a bit. Uh, I don't like to look at this one. Let's look at the retail. Here's XRT. So there's consumer discretionary, and then there's retail. This is the retail sector. And you can see this part of the, the, the um, economy is rolling over. Um, you know, when you look at XLY, there's, uh, I believe, Amazon is in that. Um, and so it's kind of skewed the overall indexes. Um, and so I probably wouldn't, wouldn't, wouldn't bank on that one. Okay. Oh, why does this keep losing? Very interesting. Okay. Anyway, um, so I want to just close with this. Uh, which is the unemployment rate. Is the SOM, has the SOM rule been triggered? Yes. Is there economic data that is uh, pretending to a recession in the future? Yes. Does that mean we have to go into recession? No, it does not. Uh, we certainly could see a more aggressive Fed easing. Um, and, you know, the stimulus situation within the economy, the fiscal side continues to be relatively strong. And so uh, while it is uh, from a year over year perspective, kind of flattening out the back half of the year, that's another reason why I think, you know, you could see a much choppier back half of the year. Don't expect um, a recession kind of in the short, short term. Um, you know, if you look at this, this is probably pretty easy. Let's go to the Fed now. now Atlanta there we go so the GDP now there we go Fed now Fed now is the uh, electronic trading platform that they're developing um, you have right here it's only about a what do we have 1.5% for the second quarter so you know while the first quarter 
you know, I think it was one and a half, two percent. We're kind of some similar in, 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 in the second quarter. Uh, we'll see what the third quarter looks like. Uh, we don't, don't have much economic data. We're only a handful of days into it, um, less than a week into it. So, uh, you know, I think it, I think a recession is starting to come into focus. But also, as I said before, not every recession is treated equal. Not every recession. Well, let me even say the 08 reception, recession, which is what most people think of as a recession, was not a recession. That was a financial crisis that caused a recession. It wasn't a run of the mill recession. And so, due to the fiscal impulse that is kind of consistent throughout government, um, a lot of it based on Social Security, Medicare, et cetera, that is a, uh, an impetus for. A probably a, a more mild recession if we get one. Okay, so is the Psalm rule triggering a recession on the horizon? I would say yes, but it does not have to put one into focus in 2024. It could it could be all the way until 2025, or maybe even the back half of 2025 until that starts to come into reality. And frankly, it doesn't necessarily also mean that the equity markets have to drop significantly. You're going to need a major credit situation in order for uh, the the broader um, broader markets to uh, turn into something uh, major on the downside. You know, talking 30, 40 percent drop. You know, I think you could get a 10, 15 percent. Uh, drop in markets. I think that's very possible. Um, but you'd also need a, and to go beyond that, I think you need a significant deflationary impulse, which we don't really see, right? We, we see inflation remaining um, ebbing continually. And I don't think that that is going to um, push us into deflation, outright deflation. Okay. Um, it's just getting closer to that 2% target uh, from the Fed. Uh, but overall, prices continue to go up. And if prices go up, uh, companies can typically pay their debts. Okay, so that's kind of where we're at. Um, we head to the back half of the year, more neutral. Uh, that could likely set up for another move higher into next year, depending on the political situation, as well as how effective Fed easing in the back half uh, manifests in markets. Okay. Well, I think that does it. Appreciate you all tuning in, liking and subscribing to this channel. And a reminder, the contents of this video are for educational purposes only and should not be construed as a recommendation to buy or sell security or to participate in investment strategy. The views are my own and do not, do not represent those of KP Financial or those associated. Have a wonderful weekend.